first question I have here in my hand. Some questions from the audience. Sure? I do. I am. <laughs> from the audience. From the audience. And they ask, can you think of a recent project you worked on where you had to negotiate multiple data sets? Yes. Uh, so the most recent project that I've been working on, it's been about six, well, it's been about six years ongoing, but we finally drilled down into the fact we need three different descriptive standards for the digital objects we're working with. Um, and I had developed kind of a, a kind of Excel uh, three tab approach, right? Not they're not integrated tables or anything that fancy, but to go from Dublin Core to Visual Resources Association Core, VRA Core, and then to IPTC um, metadata. Right. And so I, I had equivalencies out between all of them, and I actually talked to the people who <laughs> were using the data. It turns out that I had done it all wrong, right? But that there was still like some glimmer of hope in there. Uh, so yes, my most recent experience with uh, data and, and metadata and that kind of potential for multiple data types of data to work together, it came between text, images, and then uh, GIS data. And finding a way to make all of that work there was a car, work together. That was not just a long pause for dramatic effect, but to make all of that work together in a single table so that it could be uh, embedded and then maintained in an RDF triple. Good story. Mm. Yeah, good, good story. It's, it's still, it, it's to be determined. <laughs> and <Absolutely>. yourself? <laughs> and myself. I think all of the projects uh, that I work on have to negotiate multiple data sets. And uh, how do I how do I negotiate them? You might ask. You, yes, I am asking. <laughs> because there are two keen members in the audience who are dying to know. Uh, the answer to that is that you you know have to look around and figure out you know who's creating what data, and uh, then what standards are most appropriate to it, and you set them at least making standardized data for whatever they're doing. So if they're photographers, you get them working with IPTC. If they're uh, Good call on yeah. recognizing that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. IPTC and exit for your friends. Uh, th this is where there should be pop ups. Sorry. There should be. Yeah. There could be. Mm. And uh, what else? Uh, and then, you know, you get your museologist on the documentation system. You give your uh, more, more senior uh, scholar some freer way of expressing data so they don't feel oppressed by forms. Uh, um. Wait, 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 oppressed? <laughs> like, seriously, like, have you, th this is like a sidebar here, but oppressed by, but I... Senior scholars don't like forms, they feel that limits them. But no, so, but that, that, I think that that touches on a really good point, though, is that there's, there, and I think that that is a later question, is data versus metadata, right? Because metadata is that effort to, to structure and to kind of break things down so that they are, so that the values can be ignored, but the fields are focused on, right? And and then you can search and discover and, and have adventures that way. That um, yeah, and, and so, but then the problem becomes, you know, that requires quite a bit of granularity so that you don't get like whole like novels put into one field that you get like individual like paragraphs kind of parsed out and then who wants to spend like 12 hours like parsing out all of these kinds of little bits so that more can be discovered my answer is that uh, in our laboratory uh, what we do is work with uh, scholars uh, and groups of scholars and so the program is always to work with multiple data sets and uh, so the program there is to figure out what kind of things they're trying to record, what kind of tools they're familiar with, what kind of tools are appropriate to document the information they want to document in the most efficient and accurate way, and then leave the scholars run with whatever tool that is. So it can be as simple as an Excel, uh, it can be as complicated as very fancy triple store environments, uh, or anywhere in between. Uh, the important thing is that you have 
uh, the level of power of tool that you need for documenting the kind of thing that you want to document. So do you need to document a lot of details or do you want to document en masse? Um, and then you get going, let them run, uh, and uh, as long as you've well sorted out uh, the, um, the units of information uh, that you want to be able to document for whatever it is that you're documenting, then later on you can recombine things uh, using uh, ontologies and semantic uh, integration. Yeah. So that's the strategy that we use for managing multiple data sets. Yeah, I think that pairs nicely with the idea that you know, for an ontology to work, you have to have a plan for your data mm. like from the start, right? Do you want that really kind of generic, flexible schema like Dublin Core, right? Where you can where you can do a lot, you can have some flexibility amongst your kind of cohort, and there's very little chance of you know syntactic error, but for a semantic error, right? Or do you want that really detailed kind of granular data set that you know? semantic error is detected and syntactic error is less likely, right? Mm. Um, just based on that, so. And I think that also gets to the point of like, what are people comfortable with, right? How much work are they willing to put into learning things and then documenting things from the get-go? Mm. Yeah. And whether it's worthwhile for them and they get some sort of yeah, yeah. feedback on all right. of the effort they put in. Because being fancy for the sake of being fancy,